Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. My name is Abdullah Khadir, GM of the Windy City Gremlins, trademark sponsored by Reese Peanut Butter Cups. And today, I'm here to talk to you guys about why the DFFL should move forward with positional half PPR. Pass catchers, wide receivers, and tight ends will get half point PPR. Running backs will receive no bonus. First off, let's start off with our drafts because it's so, so colluded. And we're using underdog ADP here. Underdog leagues are the most competitive form of ADP. All leagues are minimum $10 deposit, and the ADP is up to every two days. So it's fresh, it's new, it's a competitive. All these leagues are serious. If you look at where the running back 24 was drafted last year in underdog ADP, eighth round, pick 10, pick 106 overall in the draft. Versus our league last year, the running back 24 was taken at the 5-6 with the 54th pick in the draft. That is a four round and 52 selection difference in ADP. 52 selections. That is the difference between CMC and like an average QB in the fifth round. That is a ginormous difference and it is just completely unacceptable it's we drain the running back position more than any other league in the world it's not a question and then when we go to the pass catchers wide receivers and tight ends on average for underdog the the 10th pass catcher off the board was taken at the 3-3 pick 27 in our league it was the 4-1 pick 49 and funny enough it was the same player keenan allen in both the underdog adp and in our league ronnie took him with the first pick in the fourth round so same exact player, Keenan Allen, normal average competitive leagues, pick 27. Our league, 49. Why is that? It's because we don't do the positional half PPR. And I'm sure that people are going to say, I don't know why we're only boosting the receivers. It's been a receiver league. You know, last year, it seemed like there were so many great receivers and not enough great running backs, which off the top of my head sounds right. It sounds accurate. But when we really look into the stats... You see they tell a completely different story. Let's look at three players here. Melvin Gordon, a player who was widely considered a very disappointing running back, didn't do much in the year, right? Stephon Diggs, a solidified star receiver, coming off of an insane season in his first year with the Bills. And then Deontay Johnson, and a breakout star of the year, you know, was force-fed the ball every single play. Seemed like he had at least 10 catches in every game. So how did these players all average the exact same points per game? Melvin Gordon was undoubtedly underwhelming. Deontay Johnson broke out into as a star receiver. And Stephon Diggs, we already know that he is a star receiver. So a bust, disappointing, half of the time wasn't even started running back, produces the same as star receivers. How about Clyde Edwards-Hilaire? Probably the biggest joke of the league this year. CeeDee Lamb, another breakout receiver. And Keenan Allen, the ninth receiver, drafted off the board. Virtually the exact same points per game. The biggest meme in the league versus a solidified, consistent, stalwart of a wide receiver and a breakout star wide receiver. Same exact output in fantasy football. Why is that? And it's not just the mid-tier players. Let's look at a superstar wide receiver, Justin Jefferson, the consensus wide receiver two, coming into this draft. Incredible year, historic year, broke Randy Moss's single season record for yards with the Minnesota Vikings. 108 receptions, 1,600 yards, 14 TDs, gives you 13.2 fantasy points per game. Elijah Mitchell, under 1,000 yards rushing, six total touchdowns, 13 points per game. Damian Harris, under 1,000 yards rushing, did have a lot of TDs, don't get me wrong, 15 TDs, but still, 13 points per game. How does that happen? We need positional PPR. This is not fair. He's doubling their yardage output damn near and scoring the same points per game. It's not like this is a matter of, oh, people just have a wrong mindset. They're draining the RBs early when really they could be getting great value receivers. No. Why spend a premium pick on Justin Jefferson when, for example, Damian Harris, who was seen as a reach at the time in the fourth round, puts up the exact same output that pick used on Justin Jefferson it's worthless when you're getting guys later than that who are going to put up the same numbers, even though realistically, fantasy football is supposed to translate real-life performance 
into points. Real life performance, Justin Jefferson is by far and away tiers miles beyond these two, yet they put up the exact same fantasy output. Now, what does half PPR do for a positional uh, half PPR? It doesn't just separate them from the receivers. It also separates the receivers from each other. For example, if we go back here to the Allaire, Lamb, Keenan Allen graphic, Keenan Allen averaged a full point per game better than C.D. Lamb in half PPR, even though in regular they put up the same uh, output. Deontay Johnson averaged a slight 0.3 better than Stephon Diggs, but still it's showing you that this half PPR is not just separating receivers from running backs, it's separating receivers from each other. Let's look at another example, mid-tier player. DJ Moore, 1,200 yards, four TDs. AJ Dillon, 800 yards, seven total TDs. Same exact fantasy output, eight points per game. Romandre Stevenson, 700 yards, five TDs on the season. Darnell Mooney, 1,100 yards almost, five TDs. Same exact points per game output. The wide receivers are objectively better, performing better, putting up better numbers in real life and scoring the exact same output. Justin Jefferson, if we go back, he's going to average four points per game more than Harris and Mitchell in this situation, which is what we want. He was historically better than these guys. It wasn't even a competition. DJ Moore would have averaged three points per game more than AJ Dillon. A.J. Dillon wasn't a factor in the offense for the first half of the year. He should be averaging significantly less than a guy like D.J. Moore. And Darnell Mooney is going to average two more points per game than Ramondre Stevenson, who is in the same situation as Dillon, where he wasn't really in the offense the whole year. D.J. Moore had a pretty impressive season, although kind of underwhelmed in the back half. He was still undoubtedly better than Ramondre Stevenson. This half-point PPR, it's not going to create this insane gap where receivers are just way better than running backs. And like I said, the guy who doesn't catch passes at all, Derrick Henry, still averaged the most points per game last year in the half PPR positional format. But what it does is it balances it out. It makes the receivers who are better than running backs better than the running backs, where it should be. And that is why we should change. Thank you for your time. Hey,